Welcome to Electron Line. Some additional subtopics that we will cover under the subtitle or the title Moments of Inertia are finding the moments of inertia of composite areas. You can see the cross section of an I beam, or you have a rectangular to and a semispherical area. We combine those, and we need to find the combined moments of inertia, uh, moments of inertia of these composite areas. Next, we also will be looking at what we call the product of inertia. So here we're finding the basically the moment of inertia such that we find both the distance to the x and the y axis. We multiply those together, multiply times the dA, the small area element, and now integrate over the entire area. The units are also meters to the fourth power, but this technique is specifically used in relevance to finding some symmetry considerations, and so we'll show you some more of that. We also will talk about what we call the principal axis and principal moments of inertia. With other words, we, we should be able to find the moments of inertia to a rotated set of axes, x prime and y prime versus x and y. Again, we have an area or we have a mass. We find, in this case, we use an area, we find the dA, the distance from x, from the x-axis and the y-axis. Well, this is the distance from the x-axis, this is the distance from the y-axis. And then, of course, we're going to learn how to rotate those and find the distances relative to the new rotated axes. So we call those the principal axis and principal moments of inertia. Next, we're going to learn how to use Mohr circle, a German engineer who came up with this brilliant technique so that we can graphically determine the principal axis and principal moments of inertia which pass through point O. So it's related here to point 8. And then point 10 or subtitle 10 we're going to look at moment of inertia of a mass. Now you say well may, wait a minute haven't we done that before? Yes but here we're going to do it in 3D. We're going to have a mass at a distance r away from the point of rotation and of course that means that we have R expressed in terms of Y and Z, X and Z or X and Y to find the moment of inertia relative to the X axis, the Y axis and the Z axis. So again special techniques for special situations. And we'll move on to our next section on the next video showing us some more subtitles or some more subtopics that we're going to cover.